This video is building on top of another video I just recorded about how to use Tangent Ripple and Colorfly together. And this is technical. This is for you guys who like to dive into the configuration tab and learn all the dangerous things that is hidden in the tree. Okay. <clears throat> Where we left off in the uh, previous video was um, here uh, we selected the Colorfly and Tangent Ripple uh, configuration that includes these two. And uh, let's start by seeing how these two are actually um, kind of brought together in the configuration. So if we look in the tree here, we see the there's this root layer which uh, seems to carry the, the name of my configuration. And if we look in the JSON code that puts this together and we can hold down shift key to, um, to kind of um, implode these sections that can be super useful to explore what's going on. And especially I want to explore what's going on right here. So we see this HVC map and um, the uh, it, it, HWC means hardware component key map. Um, the thing is that the different components on a panel from Skyhoy, you would usually use some sort of label to identify it as you assign behaviors to it. And then uh, you also need to map that onto panel one and two and so on. Now, in this case, we're essentially saying that the panel with ID one is mapped to panel ID number one and panel ID two mapped to panel ID number two. So inside our configuration, we are working with panel one and panel two as they are actual panels out here. But in, uh, in reality, uh, we could change this one over to be um, uh, panel uh, 30. Uh, let's try that. Okay, so um, if I make this panel 30, and um, ah, it says disconnected. Why is that? It should not be disconnected. Ah, okay, it's gotta be a UI bug. Anyway, this is panel 30, but if I go to simulator, Ah, somebody was clever. I thought I was messing it up. Okay, so if, if we look inside here in the HVC key map, you see that somebody was clever enough to actually correct this inside of the configuration. So now we can see what's going on. Anytime we are addressing panel with ID2 and ID1 in our configuration, it finally gets mapped over to ID2 and ID30. So far, so good. Now, let's take a look if we go back to, um, let's just shut down these editors uh, real quick here. Um, if we go back to the configuration of this one up here, then, uh, or is that the same now? Okay, I think it was the same, sorry about that. Uh, let's open this one up. Uh, can't be, can't be. It's got to be my mistake. So let's look in the... Uh, okay, so what I want... Hmm, now I know what it is. Okay. Uh, we have this feature called show include layers. And it's nice to enable if you want to really know what's going on. Because it turns out there's like a layer in between these two. And that is um, useful for us to, to actually see. So if we now uh, edit... I want to go to that one. Okay, I hold down my command key and that brings me to this configuration, which is the actual Colorfly Tangent Rebel configuration that I wanted to show you. Because inside of this one, you see that the metadata section on the uh, exterior here holds information about which panels qualify as being panel ID 1. That is Colorflies of these two models and which panels qualify to be panel ID 2. So this is how it's actually getting selected out here. This is how the if I um, remove this panel and have this box and I'm searching for it and it's looking to discover it, this is how I'm filtering that list. It's basically coming out of, of uh, that one. Okay. Why is it always closing down my editor? Yes. Okay. So what I actually don't really get is why if I edit this one, I seem to get to the wrong configuration. You see what I mean? Uh, sorry, I'm just wondering, but uh, it is a little bit confusing to me that edit this file. And it seems like I'm not editing that file, but I'm editing like my root configuration, but I'm just clicking here and then I get to edit this file. Let's continue exploring this one. 
Uh, we have a ton of variables, and those variables are the ones that you also see in the tree. So we uh, we could basically um, just shut this section down. The uh, the constant sets is also a feature you'll see covered in other videos, and that is what gives you the uh, configuration out here on the home screen. So if we go here, these three uh, tables where you can add information in columns and so on. That is what we call constant sets and they are also defined in the configuration. So in that way, you affect the UI of Reactor by setting your configuration up in specific ways. We are importing some library of functions, but the interest of, for us would be the key map because in the key map you find that there's like a, you know, that there's a section that takes a lot of these aliases or keys and maps over to actual hardware components with numbers and then uh, you do the same for panel two. So this is where I'm actually um, applying the defined behaviors for the tangent ribble onto the actual tangent ribble controls. Uh, those numbers are coming out of the topology that I can retrieve from the a connection to the tangent ribble. So uh, that's how I know those. Okay, so that's being mapped down. And then um, what happens inside of layers here? Um, I think we have a, let's just, look inside normal operation that's likely to kind of be where we have these i think the last layer no wait no 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 uh, no actually no 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 okay so uh what you have seen is that this particular configuration for color fly and tangent ribble has uh, first of all definition of support for two panels and also mapping of two panels and now our job is to make sure that whatever configuration is chosen for the particular camera will actually have these defined so they are mapped down onto the components of the tangent ribble and that happens in because this is a, a um, standard class configuration which means that whatever camera you are adding here then uh, it has like its own configuration. And that is what we call the device config. And for the device config, we uh, currently see standard class. We actually need to choose standard class with Ripple support before this will work. So uh, as I've now done that, and if I select the color fly, uh, I might be able to see parameters change. I'm rolling the trackballs and you can see something is happening over here on the BBC lots. Covered in a different video where you can see the effect. And now we're just looking at the technical side, but I chose this config. Now let's go back into the tree and then open up this configuration so that we can explore what is happening in the camera mode control layers. And there you see for the AJA color box, we are including this standard class tangent ribble. And it is inside of this one. Now we can edit raw to see what is uh, hidden inside. Ah, now it's going back to the default again. Nah, I don't like that. Um, Okay, let's explore it on this uh, level. So if I open the key map here, okay, none of that is interesting to me. And I open up the color box adjustments. Then in here, you'll find inside the BBC lots, which is currently enabled. Here, you'll actually find a layer for tangent ripple trackball behaviors, okay? And uh, what else will you find in here? You So you see, um, if we look in an isolated way on this part of the configuration that deals with color box adjustments for the BBC lots, uh, which is active when I've um, chosen that one. We have the um, home, uh, another one called home. That is weird. Uh, probably a mistake. Gamma gain and black. Now, let me just navigate the menu. So, um, okay, we could okay, use this one. That allows me to do it in a simulator. So you see, okay, um, yeah, that should actually change. It shouldn't be called home. It should be called program, but it's just a name of a layer. And uh, yeah, so basically my menu, this is how the menu works. It is browsing between these. And then when I choose this one, it's activating some layer somewhere else. But notice that we have this layer tangent ribble and regardless of the menu choice, it is always enabled. So in here we have these different um, behaviors assigned and if I take something like um, gain reset you see it is related to the BBC reset gain and I could change that parameter to something else so there's a number of things that I could choose between here like the angle for black and blue and distance and, and, and so on um, so these are possible to change by using the uh, inspector over here 
I can um, if if you look at a gain X and gain Y, those will be used for with the trackballs because it's like two encoders for the X and the Y direction, and they'll be assigned to X and Y. So this is how we are using um, a Cartesian coordinate system to manipulate polar coordinates, which is an angle and a distance and the offset. Uh, and then finally convert that back into RGB. So um, yeah, so all these are, are basically assigned here and I could go in here and change that. And it's it's always, regardless of what I choose in the menu, this is always applied to to the, the tangent rib. But for instance, if I, um, if I change uh, the, the mode, uh, so if I go into the menu, you can see that I could also go to um, like the NBC lots and then you see it is actually disabled. Let me just confirm this. So now it's changing the pipeline configuration on the tangent rail. So now uh, the focus changed over to the NPC lots. Now inside of this one, I have the same. I also have a tangent ripple support. As I mentioned in the first video, these are also uh, defined in here. I've just reverted back to BBC and um, I want to show you how the uh, angle uh, works with the um, or basically a little hidden feature in here. So you have this uh, the shift key down here. And um, in the simulator, you can't. Uh, you can simulate holding something down. So if you hold down the shift key, you see that instead of red, green, blue, I now give you gamma angle, distance, and offset. So the angle, the distance, and the offset are the, the three parameters that I can convert red, green, and blue into. And now I'm turning the encoder for the gamma angle. You can see that this is moving and the distance is changed and so on. If I roll the trackballs, then you see that the, I'm basically navigating in polar coordinates around into the uh, color circle, so to speak. And uh, that is, um, yeah, so it's, it's just a little feature that was, is added here that you can actually um, hold down the shift key and then see and also access the underlying parameters adjusted by the, the trackballs. There's one thing you might have noticed, which is that this standard class configuration for color box is quite advanced. And uh, by it is advanced because you can see that um, inside the color box adjustment section, you find that there's layers which are apparently visible depending on the system config transform mode. And that means these different, um, there's different configuration depending on how the color box is set up. So if you go into the menu here and you change over to some of the other modes, you see it's changing around. But essentially, I'm actually changing a parameter in the color box itself. Uh, actually, it is not changed before I have confirmed it because only then I'm, am I sending it to the color box. But it's still the same effect inside of Reactor. That is, that inside of these layers, there you have the individual configurations for the four encoders. But each of these layers are mutually exclusive based on which configuration is the color box in at any given moment. Uh, and then here you have, by the way, the, the global menu, which is um, basically what happens when I press this button. So that kind of goes in and overrides everything and gives me this menu up here. So I thought that was interesting to show you as well, because sometimes this gets pretty advanced. And also, in this context, some of these, only some of these, have the sections that you uh, might know from um, if we remove the tree, then uh, usually you have like a section here for, you know, a single uh, thing. So like, let's say that we added a device such as uh, manually, let's add some Canon camera. Let's just um, quickly set this up without any IP address. But then if you go back here into the configuration, you'll see that we have something called Canon, Canon camera adjustments. And uh, if I change over to that um, camera, you see the um, the different sections that you uh, have for settings on the Canon camera is basically becoming your pages here. And I can uh, change this by by using the, the UI. If I disable this mode, then you see that these um, four encoders can now have their settings changed on the focus page. So in, in a similar way, I can uh, do the same for the ATA color box. But because it's such a complex or advanced product, uh, we had to break it down so you have only the ability of pages for adjusting um, the, um, for instance, the uh, NBC, uh, NBC and BBC uh, settings, but also the Orion convert. So those pages are here. And um, to have the full effect here, you do need to just change over to Colorbox um, in the simulator so that you see the right things uh, here. But that still allows you to, uh, to change the settings. Um, Okay, I'm not in Orion Convert right now, so maybe let me just quickly see. I'm in Colorfront, all right. So let's just change Colorfront to something else. 
Let's try Orion Convert because that looked fancy and colorful and we like that. Okay, so I'm now in Orion Convert and if I want to change the things on these pages, then now I have my, my four pages and I could also essentially add more pages if I want. It always gets a little bit tricky when you have this additional shift level, although now I get curious because we had that shift level for BBC. So if we go to BBC and we also choose BBC here, then what if I go in to these and then, uh, for instance, on Gamma, uh, it doesn't specify a shift level. Okay. Now, but um, that is just to mention for those of you guys uh, that uh, know that we have, this is the default view of the configurator and we have pages and shift levels down here and sections. Um, in this case, we have a quite advanced configuration for Colorbox that you could study if you want to see how you can have like multiple sections inside. But it's essentially, um, you, you see a little indication in the tree that once in a while you have this, here's the user section, which is spanning all um, the, the keys under controller, then if you go into normal operation, into the modes, and uh, for if you look at Canon's standard class here, then you have a single section for camera adjustments. But if you go into the ADA color box, you see that apart from having a global section here, then if you enter into this one, for each of these, for these three, we have inside of those a section specifically for um, uh, the Orion Convert BBC and the NBC lots. Guys, that's it. Already a long video, but a lot of uh, you know deep tech stuff for those of you who uh, wanted to follow along on this. I hope that was useful and inspiring. Thanks for supporting Skahoy. Thanks for subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media to always stay in touch and feel free to reach out at innovationlab at skahoy.com. I'll be in the other end and be happy to answer your emails.